Hey, it's Joel. We released an episode not that long ago where we talked about the Project FDL Nerf Blaster. It's an amazing machine, fully 3D printed and available for you to put together yourself, sourcing all the parts if you want because it's 100% open source. We kind of skipped over some things though because we were really excited to try it out. So in this episode, what I want to do is kind of break it down a little bit, show you how it works, give you some really up close shots of it firing and tell you how you cannot rip the heads out of darts. So let's get into it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Ah, welcome back. Before we get into this, we should talk about one thing in that here in the Pacific Northwest, it is hoodie season. Hoodies making the comeback here every fall here in the Pacific Northwest. And this fancy, here we, there we go, this fancy Joelbot hoodie. This hoodie is available from my shop. There's a link down in the description and every time you wear one of these that you purchased from my shop, you help me. So if you can and you want to, head on down to the link in the description, pick yourself up a hoodie, stay warm and comfy this fall. So this is the Project FDL Blaster. This is amazing. This is also torn down. I tried to take as many parts off as I could while still making it functional. This is the battery. Let's plug this in and turn it on the best sound in the world. So right now, according to this screen right now, it's set the lowest speed and the lotus, lowest, <laughs> the lotus, it's set to the, uh, it's set to the lowest firing speed and the lowest firing rate. The speed controls how fast these motors spin and the firing rate controls how fast the pusher operates. And so just as an example, the flywheels aren't spinning very fast. I mean, they're, they're fast, but they're not spinning as fast and the pusher's not operating as fast as it, it can go. What I can do is turn up the speed of the flywheel. So the pusher will operate at the same rate of speed, but these, they go a little bit faster. These motors are actually drone motors and they spin ridiculously fast. If I turn the speed down and I go to the rate of fire and I set that all the way, then what you'll see is these flywheels not spinning as fast, but this, uh, the pusher, the little thing that pushes the nerf darts operating at a crazy rate of speed. That's pretty cool. And obviously if you uh, turn the speed and the rate of fire up, you just have this insane machine capable of firing Nerf darts at incredible rate of speed. So now that the battery is disconnected, what I can do is start putting it back together and show you some of the essential parts. This is the trigger right here and it operates by clicking this switch right here. The switch goes up into this control board and it tells whether or not to spin the flywheels and to spin this right here. This is the motor that controls the pusher and it just has this wheel that spins around and a little peg up into the pusher and it just goes at a rate of speed pushing each of these nerf darts that are in this into the flywheel path. So as it pushes it into the flywheel path, the flywheels accelerate it and push it out the nozzle of the blaster. The reason that heads were ripping off before is because well, it's foam and it's rubber, I guess, and the way it's glued in isn't always as resilient as these blasters need it to be. So the head connects with the flywheels. The flywheels grab the head and accelerate it, sometimes actually ripping the head off and spitting it out the front of the blaster before the foam dart comes out. That's pretty fun. One of the things that Project FDL has is they have different tails, which is this part here, and noses, which is this part here. So the nose can either take one of these full darts, it can take a half dart, or it can take, I believe the rival, the balls that uh, I know um, Luke from Out of Darts, his, his um, the Jupiter Blaster is what fires those off. Uh, I have the fully automatic tail. There's semi, I think, semi-automatic and fully automatic tail. I have the tail and then I have the full nose. And boy, now I need to put it back together, don't I? So this is the handle and this covers up this right here. And I, uh, as I screw this in, I, I wanna say one thing too. In the previous video, I talked about how these pieces were wonderful and it's true because these pieces, uh, they, don't, they don't require any supports. It, it, it's crazy to see how easy it is to put this whole thing together. And uh, in fact, I think I'm a little early on putting this in. 
So the piece that I'm missing that I forgot about is this piece right here. This is uh, the guard, I think. This is a little button that slides into place and that operates this. Let's see if I can pull this out. So the way that this works right here, there's a little spring up in here and this is the catch. So when you put in um, this, what I've learned is a magazine, not a, or is it a clip? Okay. I don't know. I would, I'd call I think it a it's magazine. A, I think it's a clip. Oh. Someone will let us know in the comments. Uh, as this, whatever it is, slides in, it locks into place right here. And then this little mechanism, as you push this way, then unlocks that and it's able to slide out. The reason it has this white piece is because of this cool feature. So I'm gonna slide it in right there. It slides in like such. I'm gonna put this in just so I can hold it into place. So this operates by going like that and then releases this pin and it can, it can let the magazine or the clip or the whatever, I don't remember it's called, out. But they also have this. This is a little, um, little button, a little, I don't know, a thing to push. But if you look, as I push this in, it causes that pin to go in. What that means is, since this is right here, then as I'm firing, if I need to release a clip, I can just hit this with my finger rather than having to go up front and pull it out. So I can just have a hand here and then release, and then put it in and then release. And so I don't have to take the extra effort to, to make sure I source this and grab it. Uh, I'm not a professional nerfer. Why are you stuck up, half-witted, scruffy looking nerf herder. I don't know what advantages that holds for um, for nerf players. So then there's the trigger and there's this that I can operate that. That works. So now what I need to do is put a couple screws in. It's always a couple screws, Sean. So we've got trigger works. We've got the, the release works. Now we need to put on this side right here. So there we go. So these go in here to hold this into place. I knew it. There we go. Uh, next, I believe we can put on this piece right here. So this is the part that a lot of people customize. Again, it's an open source blaster and uh, this along with the other side are just these pieces that people see on the outside. So Joe, 3D Maker Noob, he's the one that puts um, 3D MN and I think uh, the Magic Goo and uh, what other symbol did he have there? I don't know. He added that on. So his blaster is very customized. Mine though is just straight up white and boring is what I've been told by some. It's all right. This part here that it screws into, we had some issues on assembly because the plastic split. The screw had to go in and make its own threads but the plastic split because it was there was not a lot there. So what I did, uh, I put the screw in originally and then we used 3D glue. We did. Yeah. So we, we glooped it up which caused the plastic to connect back together and stay together and then the screw was able to back out and go back in just fine. So, uh, when assembling your own, I would recommend, if printing in PLA, having some 3D glue around because uh, it comes in handy like that. And I know some people use super glue, but I mean, super glue would have worked, 3D glue worked great, and it was uh, pretty quick. So, just a tip from me to you. Let me get this attached. There we go. So now, I can just kind of place that right there. Uh, these are the pieces that go on the front. These were really cool because they print uh, like this. There we go. They print like that and they stick to the build plate really well. Uh, the printer did a fantastic job. This is Protopasta High 5 Blue on the Prusa Mark III. And then once it released from the build plate, the build plate cooled down. I just heard that from the other room and uh, I knew, hey, the print's cooled down. One of the things I wanna show, can you see that? So these insides, if you look, they're dirty. <laughs> They've got some stuff in there. That is remnants of Nerf darts that it's pushed through. So as it's going through and pushing these darts out the blaster at the incredible rate of speed, it's actually taking bits and pieces. It's crazy to me to see this because it just shows you how powerful this, this Nerf blaster is. In fact, look at the flywheels. Oh yeah, well, they're, spinning, they're spinning so fast. They are, it's essentially Nerf dart ghosts. Or it's like Nerf Dart uh, remnants. Nerf skid, Dart Nerf skid, dart, marks, skid marks. Skid marks. That's Nerf Dart skid marks. These flywheels are fully 3D printed. And you may think that 
How can you do that? Uh, you need a perfectly balanced flywheel or something that's very well balanced because it's spinning at a high rate of speed and you could throw the balance off. And what's great is Project FDL gave printing suggestions for the flywheels and they recommended a certain layer height, an infill type, and the direction in which the infill should go. And so I printed them like that and it's great. They, well, as you've seen, they spin like crazy and there's, uh, there's no wiggle. So they're balanced or at least balanced as well as they need to be. But I was impressed that 3D printed things could be, well, spun like that. I mean, these are, these are flywheels, man. Yeah, they're fantastic. So these parts are what cover up the flywheels. You could technically run the blaster without these front parts on it, uh, or you could print this in maybe a semi-transparent material. You also, uh, what you might be able to do is embed LEDs in this. I mean, you, you have a battery, there's a way to get, I would imagine five volts from it. So you could probably power some really cool LEDs in the blaster if you had, if you had more time. This part goes on the top and this part is what covers up all these wires and all these electronics. Um, when assembling, I was honestly kind of scared at first because I'd never done this level of wiring before for a blaster. I've done wiring for the Daft Punk helmet, uh, except out over there, but this was just different because it wasn't from my own creation, it was someone else's, but the instructions were really clear and the wiring fit. Uh, I had very few questions for those at Project FDL. They were available for chat, but uh, I think we had them, we only contacted them like two or three times, right? Yep. Is that about right? Last before this cover part is this grip up front. And uh, first I want to talk about print quality. This is astounding. It's brilliant. I think that looks pretty good, right? It looks fantastic. I love that. This was printed without supports in this orientation and uh, just the Hi-Fi Blue did a really good job. I mean, obviously you can print in whatever filament you want, but I think my blue turned out pretty well. This goes on the front of the blaster and this is where you're supposed to grip the blaster when you're going around nerfing people. I would imagine this is a part that's probably modified or has other versions available so that people could grip it lower or in a different direction or, or slide out front if they have a longer barrel or something. Uh, I just went with the default and I think it worked just fine. And, set this down just like this. Last but not least is this piece. This is uh, the cover for the battery. So what you do is you attach a battery. Did I turn it off? I did turn it off. That's good. Uh, it's a three cell. It's a, let's see, Nanotech 1500 milliamp hour, three cell, 11.1 .1 volt. And you kind of have to do some battery gymnastics to get uh, everything to fit. But once you do, you can use this piece to cover it. There's two versions of this piece. There's one where you pause the print to insert the nuts on the inside of the print and you can, you can kind of hear them rattle a little bit. Uh, I chose to do that one. There's also one that you just, uh, you take the screws and you make the, the threads go into the plastic. So uh, I went with this one. <laughs> you don't want to pinch wires and you want it to go in fine. These are just thumb screws since uh, you can probably go through multiple batteries during a a Nerf skirmish. This way you can make sure you have multiple batteries and an easy way to replace them. And just like that, we've got ourselves a fully assembled Project FDL3 Nerf blaster. It takes this full of Nerf darts and it locks into place. And like I said, you can just do that to release it or you can pull down like that. I don't know, just to see what everybody else thinks. Here we go. So I told you and I showed you how everything can be slowed down so you don't rip heads off of darts, but Sean and I filmed something special. We wanted to find out the firing rate for something like this and it's insane. So I loaded this with 10 Nerf darts. We set up an iPad with a timer going and we, we recorded it in slow-mo. And if you watch, you see that these 10 darts pass incredibly fast, but when you watch the time, you see that when everything is slowed down, when the rate of fire and the rate of speed is turned all the way down, we get 10 darts out of the barrel. The 10th the dart leaves the barrel at one and a half seconds. And if you turn it all the way up, then we have 10 darts flying out. In fact, you can see in the slow motion that there are some darts getting their heads ripped off as it's coming out of the barrel. But those 10 darts, highest rate of speed, highest rate of fire, 10 darts, 0.6 seconds. So this blaster, well, it fires them quick and it's a bunch of fun. 
and now you've seen it. So I hope, I hope this answers some of your questions. Hey there, it's the next day, and unfortunately some news broke. Project FDL announced via their Facebook group that they are closing the doors and ceasing business. This is still an open source blaster, so it's in your hands to build one now because the electronics can be sourced and the parts can be printed. But for Project FDL, they ran into issues with supply, just with nature, there's supply and demand, and the demand increased with more exposure from people like myself and 3D Maker Noob. Unfortunately, the supply is not there. You can read about it on their Facebook group, and I'll put a link down in the description, but that, that leads me to say that the Nerf community is wonderful. Jesse and Jackie from Project FDL have been wonderful people. I consider them my friend, and they will still be at Earth with their Nerf Blaster Gallery. So if you're going to be going to Earth, definitely stop by, grab a blaster, shoot it in their gallery, but also don't forget to say hi to them and thank them for what they've done for the Nerf Modder community. Beyond all that, I hope you enjoyed this video because it was more of a, well, it was a breakdown of what made the Project FDL, FDL3 Blaster work, but now with this news, it's almost like a love letter to the Nerf modder industry and the engineering that goes behind a custom 3D printed blaster. Take it as you will. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you all, and as always, high five.